Sway in the Morning, Shade 4 or 5. Certain people that uh, have impacted my life. Come on. Beyond their knowledge. Mm. I remember reading the book, Making Malcolm the Myth, the Meaning of Malcolm X. Yep. Mm. Because at that time, in the early 90s, I was still going to the bakery in North Oakland with Dr. Yusuf Bay. Mm. If you know who I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Okay. And that book was extremely important. The movie was out. Mm-hmm. Um, it was came at a crucial time um, of us understanding who we are, some of our struggles, um, the duality in who we are as a people, as young men growing up in America, especially young black men. Mm-hmm. Um, born to use mics, reading Nas's Illmatic. Mm. N- another piece of his work, Come Hell or High Water, Hurricane Katrina and the Color of Disaster. We typed into that because we were doing a lot of coverage with MTV when er- Hurricane uh, Katrina hit and was going inside of the, finding out these stories that weren't being publicized on, on national TV, on a, a national news cycle. This man right here is an academic, an author, a preacher, an activist, a mentor, a guiding light, a beacon of truth, an analyst. He's do he does it all, and he's here with us today for the first time. Mm. Mm. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Eric Dyson. Wow. Wow. But wow. hopefully not the last time. Come on now. Good God Almighty. Come on. Oh, I done made it now. Look. I was on Jimmy Fallon. Talk about it. I was it. on Today's Show. Talk about I it. I was on ESPN. Talk about it. I was in NPR. But now I'm at the mountaintop with Sway. Oh, no. oh my God. Yeah. Come on, no. You know all the answers, Sway. No, no, you no, know no, all no, the no, answers. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, man. Amen. Man, I feel like I made it to the mountaintop. Man. man, where did it start for you? Where did it all begin? Mm, I was born in Detroit, Michigan, man. Let me tell you. I was born in Detroit, 1968. Okay. I just turned 61. Okay. And I was born in 1958. I'm sorry. Okay. And I was born uh, there in Detroit. And, you know, I was born in a black universe. Uh-huh. Where we took for granted that black excellence was the order of the day. Absolutely. I'm born in Motown, right? 1958. Motown is founded in 1959. Uh-huh. So Barry Gordy brings the analogy of the assembly line to bear upon musical production and a great poet named Smokey Robinson. Even Bob Dylan had to say he was the greatest poet of Uh the latter part of the 20th century. Uh I've got Uh sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got Got the month of May. I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? Not my shawty, not my hoochie, but my My girl. girl. Uh, Talking about my girl. So I was born in that womb. My fifth grade teacher, Mrs. James, made us believe that blackness was beautiful. Like, Like my mother told me, that people in the fifth grade, black parents were coming up to complain to Mrs. to the principal, Miss Dorothy Christian, a white principal, because I was in an all-black school, de facto segregation in Detroit. Why is she teaching these kids black history? Jan Matt Zelliger in the shoe lasting machine, uh-huh. Deadwood Dick the Great Cowboy, Paul Robeson, no more auction block. For me. <laughs> right, teaching us about him. Shakespeare, soft you, a word or two before you go. I have done the state some service and they know it. And when you speak of me, speak of one who loved full wisely, but not too well. And then we're reciting Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Little Brown Baby with Sparkling Eyes. I won my first blue ribbon reciting Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Mm-hmm. Black genius was the expectation. Black excellence was the paradigm that we had to admire and we were told we could achieve. So that's where it begins for me. In the church, Sunday school teachers telling us we can do it. Mm -hmm. My pastor came to my church at 12 years old, changed my life, gave me a sense of what a pastor could be, what a preacher could be. Mm -hmm. And then the death of Martin Luther King Jr. rocked my world. Mm -hmm. I had never heard about him. I was nine years old when he died. And then I sent out for, you know, y'all don't remember those 45s? I remember you know, those 45 45s. RPM. On, I know that. And listen here, I sent out with my little money that I had saved up from my allowance. Yes. And then I got those speeches. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Right? I heard that. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of marching for something that should have been mine at birth. 
right? Mm. If you want us to end our moves into communities, open these communities. Mm. So I heard the rhetoric, the verbal imagination, mm -hmm. the power. And I was exchanging poetry with my pastor, Dr. Frederick Sampson, whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. Robert Frost. Or, life is earnest, life is real, and the grave is not as gold. To dust thou art, to dust thou returnest, was not spoken of the soul. Let us then be up and doing. What a heart for any fate. Still pursuing, still achieving. Learn to labor and to wait. So all that poetry that I appreciated, the idealism of the great vanguards yeah. of literacy in the West came down when I heard, standing by the speaker, suddenly I had a fever. Was it me, me? or either summer madness? Because I just can't stand around. So I get closer and the closer I get, the better it is. It sounds my mind starts to activate rhymes collaborate but when i heard the beat i just had to make something from the top of my head so i fell into the groove of the wax and, and I, I said, said how can i move the crowd first of all ain't no mistakes allowed and then bringing it up to jay God forgive me for my brash delivery, but I remember vividly what these streets did to me. Mm -hmm. Imagine me allowing you to nitpick at me, portray me like a pickany. Contracts pickaninny into pickany to make it fit. That's enjambment in poetic device. Yeah, so here's a guy who says, you know, all my teachers couldn't reach me and my mama couldn't beat me hard enough to match the pain of my pop not seeing me. So with that disdain in my membrane, got on my pimp game, blank the world, my defense came. And on the underappreciated mm -hmm. kingdom come. Yes. On Prelude, uh -huh. I would write it if y'all could get it, but being intricate will get your wood critic on the internet. They like you should spit it. I'm like you should buy it. That's good business. Uh -huh. That dude reigns supreme uh -huh. in the poetic inventiveness and creative imagination of hip hop. Nas, J, Big, Pac, Lauren Hill, these incredible geniuses who have given us the world. You didn't ask me all that. That's no, why no, I started. No, 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 That's no, why I started. No, That's why I started. You, you, That's no, why I started. That's what makes you great. Because no. that, that, was, that, that was leading up to right. what does Jay fit into all yes. of this? He did the segue for us. Yes, you oh, did it. Man. man, I don't have to do nothing. Hey, <laughs> Sway, Come on. I'm telling you, Sway. Wow. Look, look in here. You know how much I love y'all. I'm sitting there talking to you, one of the greatest you know, you were one of the greatest emblems of not only hip hop culture, but the transference of hip hop into the broader sphere. To understand that hip hop was universal when it was born, the world just didn't recognize it. You are the emblematic expression of the genius we had when we projected into the world with humility. Mm. You have no ego mm. involved. That's why you're a great interviewer. Yes. And this brilliant young intellectual, I'm sitting too. Tracy next G. Here. <laughs> My God. She's up here talking about deconstructing toxic masculinity before we get on the air. Dog, that is like mentally orgasmic to me. Okay, <laughs> Lord have mercy. I mean, you know, so Dog. sitting between these two forces, this vector of vivacious uh -huh. and vital insight and intelligence, man, I feel good. Oh, Woo! man, we feel even, you, you feel good. You ain't even met Mike Muse yet. <laughs> oh, man, Mike Whoa. Muse. <laughs> even the name suggests the kind of intellectual depth that will be offered. Mike, go for it, man. Go ahead, <laughs> jump on it. You ready? You not ready? All right. Uh, Always ready. Go uh, for it. Go uh, ahead, Mike. Stay go ready. ready. Go ahead, Mike. Well, listen, well, one, I'm a huge fan of you. Thank Salute you, Salute for the black excellence that you always exude. Your way of words is amazing. Your linguistic ability is to be admired forever. Um, I'm from Michigan, from Lansing, Michigan. Oh, my um, man. No and doubt. so I think it's something really special about when you really talked about Detroit. Right yes, in sir. the black bottom, right? Mm -hmm. You really talk about the Renaissance, what it is. Yeah, my friend Dominic Maruso, who wrote the play Ain't Too Love Bad to Back, her <laughs> exactly. Man, I went to school with her, and she's, she's absolutely amazing. amazing. I never met her, I would love to meet her. Oh, man. I would definitely make that connection yeah, for no you, no doubt. But she talks about the same thing about mm -hmm. growing up in this system of black excellence. And it wasn't yeah. until she went to University of Michigan until she recognized blackness wasn't the majority and wasn't the dominant factor of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about the loss of that for other individuals who weren't privileged enough to live in that space where black was a majority and black was a majority of excellence, how that has impact on who we are today in contemporary times. That's a great point. You can be easily misled. You can be seduced into believing that you don't have and possess what it takes to be great. Right. My, my fifth grade teacher convinced us we are the bearers of an inheritance that must be preserved, guardians of a new expansion of black intelligence that must be vigorously advocated. And so I felt that in my bones. Kenneth, you know, Cockrell, the great lawyer before there was the great Johnny Cochran, whom I knew. Uh -huh. But Kenneth Cockrell, who died 51 years old, would have become the mayor of Detroit. Mm -hmm. But, man, he would use these polysyllabic words, man. Damn. And he'd be cussing out the judge. I mean, literally cussing him out. Mm -hmm. But then using these big words, I said, I'm a, I'm a 
do that one day, man. I'm going to mm-hmm. have that ability to deploy that linguistic facility in defense of my vulnerable populations mm. and be able to articulate an idea that the folk can't even be mad at. Mm. Yeah. And even if they're mad at it, they can't, they can't stop it. You know, young black people sometimes come to me, you know, man, I really dig you. I love your spirit. Sometimes you be using the words. I don't understand. Well, I said two I things. About it. My, right. my mama told me, first of all, look it up, bro. And, and I, I ain't had no Google. Google. Yeah. I had to go to the Merriam <laughs> Whip, Webster uh-huh. Dictionary, dog, and look it up. That's number one. But number two, I use big words to defend you against people who don't understand you. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, That's man. what I'm doing, dog. That's all I is. said, they, they calling you a bunch of names, yeah. but using words you don't understand. I know the words they using, and I'm fighting back with the words they be using to defend you so that you can grow and prosper into your humanity. So for those who don't have it, I, I feel sorry, you know, mm-hmm. that that history is critical. Um, that history of understanding what we were produced in and the complicated narrative of blackness that allows us to pivot around multiple axes and see different understandings and perspectives, which is why, as much as I love young generations, I'm not one of these, and I know the president, the former President Obama came at woke, uh, came at wokeness, and I thought that was tragic. As much power and in intelligence he is, as he has, uh-huh. I, I think that you got to use that bully pulpit to come at white supremacy, not just black wokeness. However, having said that, what I do agree with and what I understand is the, the criticism of cancel culture. You're trying to dispose of people. Yeah. You're trying to, I, you, you know, Sway been in the game 30 years, but something he said last year, I disagree with, now he's canceled. Yeah. Like all that? Out? (laughs) Like all that done? Cancel a debt, but don't cancel a human being. And cancel Mm. culture is an uncritical internalization of white supremacist culture. Mm. Black folk ain't trying to cancel you. We're trying to redeem you. Uh But cancel culture presupposes you have an arrogance, a self-righteousness, an ethical awareness that is exclusive to you. Uh That's Donald Trump. Uh who stands up every morning to excrete the feces of his moral depravity into a nation he has turned into his psychic commode. Stop that kind of madness and embrace the beauty of that black universe and cosmos. Psychic commode. Oh, my gosh. Uh, We see cancel culture. You talk about this in the book. By the way, uh, we'll go through all the chapters if we can in the way that you decided to break down the book. But in the epilogue, you talk about... Recently, we heard Jay Z experience cancel culture, yeah. and and you talk about the internal tension, attention right. that happens between the outside agitators and and those who are uh, inside right. actually activating That's right. uh, movement change and That's right. growth. When Jay Z took uh, on the NFL and did this deal, right, uh, people lashed out at him. A lot of mm-hmm. our people in our community mm-hmm. canceled him, right. Uh, but you can you give examples of how we've seen this happen in the civil rights movement, where you have those who are working to get inside and those who right. are working from the outside. Exactly right. I mean, it's important. That's why history is critical. Mm-hmm. You know, don't be born yesterday, think you know everything, and then you ain't got no history. Gore Vidal said, "We live in the United States of amnesia." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would argue that the theme song is sung by Barbara Streisand was too painful to remember. We simply choose to forget. White privilege disallows people to remember that it ain't just the reenactment of the Civil War. It's also right in how you won. First of all, y'all didn't win the war. The South lost. Mm -hmm. That's like that's like on the one year anniversary of Tom Brady beating the Los Angeles Rams. The Los Angeles Rams have a celebration of their participation in the Super Bowl. But, bruh, you didn't win. So I don't know what you're talking about. Right. That history is critical for young black people, especially. We're going to cancel who Martin Luther King Jr. would have been canceled 50 times if he'd been alive today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Before he before he gave his I have a dream speech because you disagree with his strategy. Back in the day, Malcolm X, whom I love and adore, as you know, I wrote my second book on Malcolm Mm -hmm. making Mm -hmm. Malcolm. Malcolm, Malcolm, the myth and meaning of Malcolm X. Malcolm X was a genius, was an incredibly powerful orator, organizer, who understood the necessity of having black consciousness in a way even before Martin Luther King Jr. did, right? He encouraged all of us to understand and embrace our blackness. On the other side, he also called King names. He said he was a Tom. He said he was the greatest weapon the white man has ever had. I don't agree with that. I think he was, Martin Luther King Jr. was far more complicated than that because Malcolm X didn't change the law. The law said you couldn't vote. The law said you couldn't stand in certain, stay in certain hotels and move freely on public transportation. Mm -hmm. That's the law. One thing to stand in Harlem to snap at King down in Birmingham. Another thing to get on the plane and go down there with him and fight, Mm -hmm. right? So King said the Civil Rights Act 1964, Voting Rights Act of 1965, most black folk in the South couldn't vote until 1965. So he changed the law, not just perception, which is critical, which is what Malcolm did, and self-respect, he changed the law. But Malcolm is hollering at him and wanting, quote, to cancel him. 
And then look what happened to Malcolm. You cancel somebody. A few years later, you begin to see King is right. Some uh -huh. of the stuff I'm doing ain't right. He's got a better venue and an opportunity to think about things. We can conjoin together. And then the folk who used to love him canceled him. Yeah. Mm. This is the this is the ultimate logic of cancel culture that ultimately you going to do something to get, make yourself vulnerable to cancellation yourself. So we should learn that the inside and outside is necessary. Reverend Jesse Jackson would call Texaco to account. They had done some horrible things. They unleashed this tape within Texaco that was uh, that was horrible, calling black people the N-word and so on. They had uh -huh. a suit going on. He protested. Then they said, you know what? It's serious what he's talking about. How are we going to deal with it? They got to say, what are we going to do? Call him in. Can you help us? Of course. So Jesse Jackson goes in to negotiate a settlement. What is the consequence? $100 million and plus for those employees at Texaco. Now, is he a sellout for having first protested them yeah. and then went inside to negotiate with them? No, it's all part and parcel of the process. It's the leg of the journey. Now, there are some people who sell us out and there are some people who uh, undermine us. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z ain't one of them. Okay. What did Colin Kaepernick get in three years that he never got with the NFL before Jay-Z got there? A tryout. Mm -hmm. Now, you may say the tryout was, was trash. You may say it was set up. The NFL was egregiously offensive for denying him the opportunity to ply his craft and play and display his wares and do his thing as a quarterback in the first place. Okay. No question about that. All right. However, after the fact, when Jay-Z comes on the scene, he cajoles, encourages, persuades Roger Goodell and the NFL to give this man a trial. First of all, NFL don't do trials. Combines do and individual teams. So that was an exception that people didn't even acknowledge about Jay in the first place. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there were arguments about the waiver. Let me be fully honest. I've seen the waivers okay. that the NFL talked about. It's not quite, forget it. It ain't what Mr. Is it Kaepernick standard? said. Was it, is it, the standard? it wasn't standard, but okay. here's the thing. It wasn't standard, but it was drawn from standard stuff made for the occasion. Okay. And as a result of that, and they had sent one that Colin had signed before. I saw that. And I saw the waivers that were sent. When you look at it and you do a comparative analysis, it wasn't what it was made out to be. Now, what does that mean? Could Colin Kaepernick be getting bad advice? Potentially, yes. Uh -huh. Could he be stubborn about it because he wants a better deal? I understand that, yes. But let's not put that burden on Jay-Z as if he joined with an entity, the NFL, that he then was duped by. Why is it when a white man goes in a room with a black man, we assume the white man getting over on you? Uh -huh. When Jay-Z clearly made them do something they ain't want to do, yeah. they were accused of collusion and got basically censored in court for that, and then they made a settlement with Colin Kaepernick. So we know that Jay-Z's presence caused a difference there. To simply say he was a sellout is to misunderstand what Jay-Z did, the, the, the kind of cultural capital he expended mm -hmm. to make sure that Colin had a tryout. And let me say this that I know a lot of people who love Colin Kaepernick may not want to hear. When you are on the righteous side, and he is, my last mm -hmm. three books, I've talked about him. An extraordinary he's an amazing person. He's an extraordinary, extraordinary. icon, yes. a remarkable human being, uh -huh. a man who has made sacrifice that the likes of which a lot of people won't understand. And when they say, well, he's getting paid by Nike and so on and so forth, that's true, but that doesn't mean what he has given up is uh -huh. not significant because he wants to play. On the other hand, it ain't no harm to say, Sway, I love you. You my man. But if we go on into the battle, can I give you some advice about kind of things to do, yeah. strategy to have. Uh -huh. Like, maybe not come in with the with the Kunta Kente shirt. Now, some people think that was righteous. That was bold. You know, but I don't want the commercial. I want the product. Hmm. And see, you can have the commercial, and I ain't mad because you can galvanize people. When you come in, he ain't taking no guff. He uh -huh. ain't kissing no butt. Let me tell you, if you alive and human, you kissing somebody's butt. Okay. Mm. I don't care who you is. It could mm. be your woman, could be your man, <laughs> could uh -huh. be your child, uh -huh. could be your job. You in relationship of vulnerability strategically and systemically to others. Now, you can maintain your integrity, mm. and you should. That's not the only way to show integrity. You could have come in with a Mickey Mouse shirt. Hey, boys and girls, how are you? Uh -huh. And got in that game, and then like Samson, go inside and destroy the columns mm. and bring down the edifice of injustice. Now, I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong. I'm saying there are alternative strategies to be deployed. When you're going up against an NFL full of white supremacist ideas on some level and some of the owners who are insensitive to uh -huh. your particular plight, when Jay-Z steps in to broker that negotiation and force them to give you a shot, 
It ain't it ain't giving up your integrity to be compromising on the the symbolic expression uh-huh. of your blackness, right? Because it's not going to be exhausted in that. That one T-shirt doesn't exhaust who Colin Kaepernick is. Uh-huh. Neither does it capture him. Uh-huh. Now, if it looks like he's thumbing his nose at the man, that's good too. But what is the ultimate game? Are you playing chess or checkers? And there are ways in which look Martin Luther King Jr. Since you brought this up, yeah. in the in the movement, Martin Luther King Jr. had what he called a team of horses. They would get in the room, they'd be cussing, he'd, no, you wrong, that's crazy. No, we should do that. King right in the middle. No, you should do, no, that's wrong, no, let's do this. And then one time, Andrew Young, his aide, uh, who's usually a conservative dude, uh-huh. came down with Jesse Jackson and Jose Williams, who are on the left, and King took him aside, look, dude, I need you to be the right wing so I can come down the middle. <laughs> yeah. God dang, you can't be messing me up. Uh-huh. I'm trying to negotiate here. That's Martin Luther King Jr., one of the greatest strategies and tacticians, tacticianers for civil rights and social justice. We are so willing to cancel anybody. You're a sellout. You're crazy if you disagree with me. Colin Kaepernick has other people like Malcolm Jenkins for the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, think about the former player Anquan Bowden. Those people are being called sellouts by Eric Reed, whom I love and adore too. Even if they call and me what a sellout, the players, I don't um, care. What the players, players coalition, players coalition uh-huh. is Malcolm Jenkins. Eric Reed said that Malcolm Jenkins was a sellout because the owners offered them $90 million to be able to fund the programs they were doing. Let's do both. Let's take the dough Uh and do the local programs because look what they're doing is amazing. They are doing what Colin Kaepernick said he wanted to do, fight on behalf of black people against oppression. But this is what Jay-Z meant. Maybe we could say he could have said it differently when he yeah. said we're past kneeling. What he meant was kneeling by itself won't do it. we got to deal with something deeper and more profound. Malcolm Jenkins has supplied that along with others. Let's look at stand your ground laws on local levels. Let's look at how they're charging young black people as adults when there are children. Fight those laws. When you fight that... That ain't sexy. That ain't on the that ain't on the cover of, of Time magazine uh-huh. or Sports Illustrated and the beautiful stuff that Colin is doing. But it is the grimy, unsexy, everyday work that is mandated if we're going to make a change. Can we have both and not either or? Stop the name calling. Stop uh-huh. the finger pointing. And let's work together to change this thing for everybody. Michael Eric Dyson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Not everybody's going to agree with Michael Eric Dyson. Right. That's all right. I ain't mad. I've been doing mad. this for 61 years. I'm ready for it. You're ready for it. <laughs> um, I think for me personally, one of the the biggest gains I've had as an individual watching Jay-Z's career, uh, meeting Jay-Z early in his career, mm-hmm. uh, before the su- success reached the levels that it's had, uh, dissecting, analyzing his lyrics, you know, one by one. Yeah. From first four or five albums, mm. you know. Um I slowed down Michael Eric Dyson because I'm 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 dissecting all kind of lyrics now. But, you yeah, know. Right, right. But his personal evolution, his growth, his emotional intelligence, mm. uh the way he's grown as an individual mm. from the days of big pimping right to <laughs> four four four. Come on, man. Come on, this is what this is what our dear sister, sister Tracy G, mm-hmm. yes. was talking about in yes. terms of toxic masculinity. Can you put that in context the way you have in the book and walk yes, us sir. up? No, that's a great, great point. Yeah. Look, you know, big pimping and you know, or I can't see him coming down my eyes, so I make the song, song cry. cry. You yeah. are as clinically dispassionate. You mm-hmm. can't even feel. First, the fat boys break up now. Every day I wake up and somebody got a problem with hope, mm-hmm. right? So now, and you're distant. You know, you don't do this to your man. He's talking about his emotional hurt, but he's distant because he acknowledged that after his daddy left, right? Now all my teachers couldn't reach me, and my mama couldn't beat me hard enough to match the pain of my pop not seeing me. Mm. That emotional disconnect, that, that, that vicious assault upon his vulnerable growing ego, his fragile soul as a baby. Daddy, for what you ain't got no deep explanation for why the man left. Later on, he understood that there were some reasons, but when you're in it, it hurts. Mm-hmm. So he you know, unconsciously distances himself from any emotional connection, including with women. And then fast forward a while, as you said, all the changes he went through, big pimping, meeting Beyonce, changing his perspective. It sounds like a cliche, but the people you know can help you grow. Yeah. And meeting her, talking to her, having a daughter. Can you imagine changing your whole perspective? And on 444, you go from big pimping to song cry to... You know, I apologize. You matured faster than I do, mm-hmm. than I did. I mean, to imagine to say that to the world, 
right? Yeah. We talked about Drake, who brokered an acceptance for a deconstructed toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. And Drake is born October 24th. I'm born October 23rd. Uh, several years apart. Okay. Oh, That's a few. But light-skinned, emotional Negroes do be saying stuff <laughs> yeah. in a certain kind of way, right? Uh -huh. We be in our feelings. We didn't have to say that to Kiki. We knew it immediately just checking us out. Mm -hmm. But when you think what Jay did to leverage that emotional introspection, Right, because a lot of men are taught not to think about their feelings. Don't claim those feelings. Don't wrestle with them. That's women's work. No, that's the work of serious human beings who evolve and grow. If we had more therapy, maybe we wouldn't shoot each other in the street. Maybe uh -huh. we wouldn't kill each other with words. Maybe we could accept that we are different and therefore we can um, embrace and affirm each other. And so Jay talks about therapy, about yeah. his mother being lesbian. This is unprecedented in hip hop and doing it in a way that is with filled with pride and acknowledgement. So to talk about, you know, a, a situation where let's be honest, Lemonade could have gone down as the greatest diss album of all time. Yeah. Because she ain't named nobody, but uh -huh. we knew who it was. Yeah, everybody knew. And, and it, look, he could have played it off. He could have said, I don't know who she was talking about. She ain't named me. So, bro, I don't know. My name is Ben and I ain't it. No, he owned up to it. He fessed up and even went a step further. So, Lemonade is the, you know, if the, we look at Hegel, installment. that's right, the first installment, installment. that's the thesis. Okay. 444 is the antithesis, and, and, and everything is love is the synthesis. He comes yeah. together <laughs> and resolves it, but, but he has to go through that brook of fire he got to tell the truth and a lot of men we'd like to skip over well we don't want to tell the truth, the truth now well he said how can i heal how can i uh heal what i don't reveal, reveal. come on mm -hmm. bro he you puts know? it in a couplet that is yep. so deep and then we don't want you know a lot of people look i'm an ordained baptist minister they say all you need is jesus no mm. no son you needs more than that you know that famous passage in the bible when the disciples go to jesus and said we tried to cast this demon out but we couldn't why couldn't we lord well that kind comes out by prayer and fasting mm -hmm. and pros I, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure Jesus said that. Thou needest chemicals. I'm pretty sure I heard that. Opioids. O opioids. Thou needest opioids right now. Yeah, yeah. not by itself. Um, right. Not only that, I think his journey reflects and mirrors so many of ours. Oh, on a, on a, on a, I won't say smaller scale, but everybody who uh, grew up in a lot of folks, even outside of disenfranchised environments, oh, of course. Can't have experience, especially growing up in hip hop. That my right. that machismo we're talking about. Yes, yes. You had to thump your chest. So you, oh yeah, I'm you, the man. You, right. I'm the man. You felt like you did. So right. You, so but if you the man, you ain't got to announce. You it. ain't got to announce. You it, ain't got to tell but nobody. We were boys learning from boys. Come on. I mean, we, this is lateral. We, this yes. is lateral movement. Yes. Boys instructing boys. Yes. And isn't it interesting? Black men, among others, but we're talking about hip hop now. Mm -hmm. Love they mama, hate they baby mama. So the vertical mm -hmm. relationship is fine. The horizontal is need, in need of healing. Okay. But that same woman you hate is somebody else's mama. Yeah. So if you put yourself in that position, right, we have femophobia, scared of women. Just a real woman comes mm -hmm. on the scene, you get scared. Don't be scared. This mm -hmm. is the Donald Trump. Grab the whatever. Vagina. If you a real yeah. black man, if you a real man, if you a real human being, you ain't got to grab it. If you a serious man, call it. Summons it with the integrity of your personality. Mm -hmm. Attract it. Magnetize it with the beauty of your willing to sacrifice, willingness to sacrifice yeah. for your beloved. That's the kind of sacrifice that ultimately the best of religion talks about. So for me, as you said, that kind of acknowledgement of our masculinity that needs to be vulnerable and to be healed mm -hmm. and to have therapy and to have love, to talk to our beloved, uh, you know, uh, figures in our lives. That's the beautiful thing about our culture. And Jay has shown that, yeah. led the way in terms of opening up and to acknowledge the growth. Okay, Michael Eric Dyson is here. We're talking about the book Jay-Z, Made in America, uh, which is an incredible book where he analyzes Thank Jay's you, lyrics and put it in context of things that were happening in society at the time. I opened the phone lines. I wanted people to have a chance to uh, speak to you directly. Absolutely. Okay. And if you want to reach him, you can via social at. Yes. Michael Eric Dyson on Instagram at Michael Eric Dyson on Facebook and on Twitter at Michael E. Dyson. Uh, we have Brandon from Phoenix, Arizona. Brandon, what up, B? Hey, Brandon. What up, Brandon? B. Hey, what's good? What's good, Sway? Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Dyson. Hey, man. Hope everybody's blessed this morning. Yes, sir. Um, my, my question was, you know, like, you know, Jay-Z, he's been in the public eye for a long time. And, mm -hmm. You know, you hear controversy about things in people's lives and decisions that they make. And, you know, I have once heard that. Oh, he sold his soul, or he's part of a secret society. That's how he's being so successful. And but as I've been listening, you know, in in um, bond and uh, brotherhood in in the black community, 
you know, it's different. Like in the Mexican community, we always kick each other down and nobody's bringing each other up, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, how is it, how was he, you know, um, you know, how was he able to just reach the masses, you know, with, mm -hmm. with all his, uh, success, you know? And right. I don't want to point fingers and say, Oh, he's, he's serving the devil or the Luciferian thing. That's why he's so okay. out there. Well, and, so, and, so know, like it, that, but to right. this point, so in order for him to be successful, right. in order for a black man what? to be successful, in order for pyramids to be built, that had to happen from aliens. Right. I mean, in order doc. for a black man to be successful, become a billionaire in America, he Illuminati. had to have sold his soul. That's what I'm saying. And I think our devil. That's right. And our speaker, <laughs> and our speaker wow. is skeptical of that. And thank you for calling in, my yeah. man. And and that's something. That's what I meant when I said. So the white man and the black man go into the room. You think Roger Goodell tricked on him, and he made Roger Goodell do something he didn't want to do. But but he the weak one. He the one being led around. Mm -hmm. Or now because he and Beyonce are so successful, you know. I said I was a mason, not a mason. Right? Yeah, Remember he said yeah, yeah. on that Rick Ross, I was amazing, not, not a, a mason. mason. Your, yeah. your, your mumble rap will kill you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me, let me put a pin in that. Let me, let me go on the mumble rap for a second. Okay. What the heck? I love, look at here. No, I, don't I, do I joke with do it. Look, I love him. I love him. I said, like, 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 you know what I'm saying? Uh, actually, I, I kind of don't. You can't. But, but, wait a minute, hold on. But okay. I'm going to say this. But okay. I'm going to say this. I'm joking with that, right? Okay. Only thing I understand, walking like you, talking. Hey! hey! But here's the point. The reason they're mumbling is because when they were clear and articulate, the society still treated them like persona non grata. Mm -hmm. So they began to obscure and muddy their discourse in order to communicate with each other. No need to let the vulnerable uh, side of their soul show and the enemy get in talk with them, So uh, uh, to attack them. So I think mumble rap has an ingenious kind of blues aesthetic, right? Even go. the Bible says when, when, when if, if, if you can't talk to God, just moan a little bit and right. God will interpret the moans. So I see mumble rap as the articulation. <laughs> of the moans on the blues aesthetic. Back to my point and my lecture at hand. Okay. So I think, <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> I think that, look, why you got to act like my genius alone ain't going to help me. Ain't nobody saying anything about Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. Ain't no saying about Bill Gates. Uh -huh. The Illuminati came out. I mean, they do it to a degree, but not to the degree of intensity with us. And so, to, as you brilliantly put it, to, to create the pyramids, you and some aliens had to come down. Or Illuminati had to be there with Jay-Z and Beyonce. How about genius? How yeah. about talent? Brilliant. How about skill? Yeah. How about hard work? You ain't going to outwork uh, Beyonce. Uh -huh. You know, you're not going to do that. And, and, and Jay-Z has built an empire by hard work. And by the way, not only in terms of his personal relationships to his wife and uh -huh. how he's changed, the woman running his company, the COO of Rock Nation, is a brilliant, uh -huh. gifted, fierce, beautiful woman. Desiree Perez. That's right. Right. Yeah. And nobody gives Jay the credit for understanding, recognizing her genius, mm -hmm. her hard work, her assiduous and diligent work, because she earned it. Ain't nobody, you meet her in five minutes, you know she will throw down, bro. Yeah. She is rhetorically sophisticated. She's powerful. She's self possessed. She's confident. And yet she's humble enough to engage the world. Jay Z helped make that possible. Mm. So why is it that we got to ascribe that to the Illuminati and some folk making some stuff up? Uh -huh. It's called Negroati, nah. and they've been down. They're working in the basement of hope to rise to the through the elevator of expectation to the heights of success. That's what got him there. The hard sweat ethic, the elbow grease, as my daddy used yeah. to say. That's what it is. No, no gut, no, no goat's throats being cut and Come sacrificed. On. You know what I'm no saying? human beings being ate at the table. Nothing Lord like that. Mercy. No, just sheer brilliance. The, yeah. And the education that has happened along the way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and as you watch those two evolve as a couple, but uh, Jay Z mm -hmm. as an individual. Well, right, you know, he he went from I can't think of what song he was it is over where he said I did it so you didn't have to uh, sell right. drugs. Yeah, and, no, and, 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 you and, act like Hope told you sell drugs, but Hope no, you didn't do that so you wouldn't. You know, Hope yeah. did that Hope so you wouldn't do that. that. So you yeah. so you wouldn't on the blueprint, right? Exactly on the, on the blueprint. Um, right. and 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 we watched this man talk about you know don't knock the hustle uh, right. from reasonable doubt on right. from twenty two twos. I heard twenty two twos before right. I heard the album. Right, right. Uh, talking about hustling and and and. Um, business acumen and right. um, and uh, financial literacy. He was giving right. us that early before anybody was even using that phrase. So true. Um, and then to see him achieve what we consider the ultimate of becoming a Come billionaire. On, Come on, man. With his family, though. That marketing plan was me. <laughs> Dude, he was telling you. You know what I'm He's saying? He's giving you the game. He's dissecting the what? matrix 
in front Come of on. your very eyes if Come you didn't on. listen. And, but we I'm overcharging for what they did to the, the cold, cold crust. And yeah. I just had Grandmaster Cass up here. Come on, man. Hey, I mean, yeah, he but, understood from the very beginning. See, this is what I mean by the commercial versus the product. Yeah. He's talking about reparations. Mm-hmm. But he's talking about individual reparations first, right? So that I, you know, my success is a token of the enormous sweat of my people. And you, and before you systematically um, implement reparations, I'm going to get what I'm getting right now as mm-hmm. a token of what you owe them. This dude is talking about generational wealth. He's talking about regret, right? I'm from the place where the church is the flakiest it's been praying to God so long that they atheists. What? Mm. Your faith has not even delivered what you expect from it. Mm-hmm. Or looking out on the landscape, you must love me because I shot you as my brother and you still requested to see me in the hospital. Pouring out, what does he say, volume after volume mm-hmm. after volume. I can't help the poor if I'm one of them, so I got rich and gave back. That's the win-win. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's his strategy behind what mm-hmm. he's doing. He ain't lucky. He is working hard. He got some breaks to be certain, but he made that happen by dint of his reason, of his of his of his hard work, and of his genius. And why can't we acknowledge that? That what he did was part of a of a bigger plan. Because we think a poor black boy who dropped out of school ain't got no skill. Yeah. I mean, Nas is an eighth grade dropout. Mm-hmm. Who's wrong? Him in the school. It's only right that I was born to use mics and the stuff that I write is even tougher than dice. I'm taking rap into a new plateau through rap slow. My rhyming is a vitamin hell without a capsule. A smooth criminal on beat breaks. Never put me in your box if your stuff eats tapes. tapes. Come the on, shit man. Eats tapes. I mean, come on. Uh-huh. That's that's the raison d'etre of hip hop, uh-huh. right? Amen. Biggie said, you know, I used to fuss when the landlord dissed us. No heat. Wondered why Christmas missed us. Birthdays was the worst Birthday. Days. Now we sip champagne when we thirsty. I imagined it. Damn right I like the life I live because I went from positive to neg- negative positive, right, and it's all good. If you don't know, now you know. But he also said back in the days our parents used to take care of us. Look at them now. They're even blank and scared of us, mm-hmm. calling the city for help because they can't maintain. Damn things done changed. Yeah. So 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 these kids, these young people, these college, these high school dropouts are now being taught at college. Yeah. Right? The ones who were seen as illiterate. Right. Mistakes of a black man misunderstood. Right. But it's all good. good. Those people who have been dissed, who have been dismissed. Jay-Z represents the overcoming of an extraordinary capacity of young black men and women Uh to tell the truth to American society, to embody the beauty of our culture and to do so with swag, Uh with intelligence and intensity to make it sexy. That's what I've been trying to do for all my life that I've been intellectual, trying to make the life of the mind sexy to young people. Well, when you brought that, when you wore that suit today, you was already (laughs) on sexy. I already know what's going on. Yeah, you already... Has, has Jay Z read Cat the book? Daddy, yes, he has. He sir. called he, you. What did he say? He texted me. He said, "Man, he's humbled and honored." Man, he uh-huh. said, uh, "Congratulations on it." And let me tell you what Jay did for me, man. Let me let me let's put it out there. So my publishers, as any publishers are, and you all know this, mm-hmm. they're very skittish. Oh, uh, you can't quote but like half a bar. And if you do, we got to get copyright, and then we got to pay all that money, right? It would have mm-hmm. been ex- exorbitant in terms of price. I hit Jay up. I said, "Look, man." I'm doing this book. I'm going to examine you. I'm going to talk about, you know, your greatness and your career and your power and your possibility and the challenges you've had, the foibles, the mistakes. I said, but I need to have access to your lyrics and I need your permission. He gave me permission to do that. Right. Wow. It's an act of generosity yeah. for which I am eternally grateful. Yeah, man, that's Jay-Z, man. Uh, Michael is, Eric man. Dyson, man. This book, Jay-Z Made in America, put the... Put into context. The Ford was by Pharrell. Pharrell did it, man. Why Pharrell? Uh, it was amazing. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, you know, uh, but what made you choose Pharrell? I mean, Pharrell is an, a distinct artist on his own. One of the greatest mm-hmm. producers we've ever seen. His longevity. Yeah. Right. In the game. Seeing different changes. And the beautiful work he's done. Some of the best work Jay has done has been with Pharrell. Mm-hmm. So I wanted a guy like that who's been in the game like 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 Jay a long time, who's seen the changes and who's able to encompass what Jay is about and to intellectually articulate that. That's Mm -hmm. what I wanted, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, Trace, you got a question? Yes, please. Um, I want to pivot a little bit from Mm -hmm. Hove and go into what you said about um, the life of the mind, you Mm -hmm. know, because I think of you as an intellectual, as an academic, as a very spirited orator, Mm -hmm. and I wonder if that's a gift or a skill Mm -hmm. because I think about the epidemic a lot of the younger generations face with, like, our low attention span Mm -hmm. and this kind of um, 
deaf by convenience mm. because we have everything that's so accessible like our retention is just slowing down mm. and so i think to myself like in 20 years if someone needs to deliver a speech or needs mm. to be a teacher like we're gonna be choosing from it looks like it appears and this could just be you know from my view mm -hmm. a very small pool right so in your opinion how do we exercise the brain like how exactly mm. do you you know you spoke about when you were younger and seeing your pastor and and using all of these different words right. and how that influenced you how did you actually implement that like right. every day are you learning a new word and then saying i'm going to use this in a sentence mm. like <laughs> five times like right no that's brilliant man your flow is crazy um <laughs> <laughs> death by convenience yes. i'm gonna have to sample that Listen, okay our brains are being hijacked let me tell you what. This is how the Baptist <laughs> preachers do it. The first time they do, as Sway said. Mm -hmm. The second time they go, as somebody said. <laughs> the third time they go, like I always say. <laughs> Death I'm gonna say, by first, convenience. That's right. I'm going to say, first time Tracy G said this. Second time, like somebody said. I'm going to say, like, man, I be talking about death by convenience. That's what I be talking about. So, <laughs> so the thing is, is that that's such an excellent point. Um, because we have condensed knowledge, yeah. right? I mean, the social media is ingenious. Stuff that used to take me going to the library, uh -huh. right? As they used to say. That, and I say, it is a library. It's not just a library. It's a library because that's where the lies are buried. I go to the dig them up. <laughs> but the there's lies something, are buried. Right? Bars! <laughs> Bars! But, 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 but look, and, and, and it's important. I used to go like that. I see, I like papyrus. I like pages. Yeah. I like to smell the decay on the page when I'm turning it. I like to feel it fleck beneath my nails as I thumb through through the intellectual erudition that is contained there. So I like that. But I get the fact that whole libraries have not been digitized. So what took me a day, a week, a month can now be accessed by in a, in a, in a few minutes. That's remarkable. That's amazing. But the irony, the contradiction, maybe even the painful paradox is all that stuff at our fingertips and we ain't even using it. Too lazy to think about it. When I'm on the internet, when I'm on social media, it's a beautiful form. It democratizes access to people. I could, you know, Du Bois wasn't reachable by people who loved him. Uh -huh. uh, people couldn't talk to you. Didn't, I didn't get on phone. Let me, let, me, let me talk to Jay. Let me talk to Diddy if they respond. Let me talk to Dyson. Who? Let me talk to Sway. Let me talk to Tracy G. It's amazing. Microblogging on Twitter. But the problem is, we you know it's, it's like the same thing about doing a song on the internet versus doing it on the chitlin circuit. Mm -hmm. Like when you become famous because somebody discovered you and now you famous and you ain't never been on one trip to the Apollo mm. where people where people <laughs> challenge you. Mm. Oh, you gonna come with more than that? Yeah. Oh no, that's the best I had. No, no, that ain't good enough. They what? Like I, I used to I used to get over in a Schenectady with this. Uh -huh. I got over in uh, uh, Indiana. No, you at the Apollo, Negro. Mm -hmm. Step your game up. Mm -hmm. So that kind of <laughs> pressure right yeah. that intellectual chitlin circuit is incredibly important intellectually too somebody got to challenge you that's why i'm saying we can't be soft i'm gonna cancel you because you disagree with me and i uh -huh. hate you no don't cancel me learn from me yeah. engage me talk to me build a better argument against the one i got uh -huh. help me understand where i've been misled so i think look this is why i'm determined to be a one-man evangelist and many others who have joined to go out here spreading the gospel of thinking and dealing with difficult stuff and yeah i used to look i used to read the dictionary that was that was fun to me i ain't uh -huh. gonna lie to you when i was a kid yeah. i won i won the spelling bee in the fifth and sixth grades i won an oracle or to, or contest when i was 11 years old well that's mm -hmm. when i entered i won it at 12 and i've been doing that stuff ever since even before with my sunday school teachers and the like i find it ex exhilarating i find it fascinating it's beautiful it's sexy and i think young people can be taught that but we have to relearn stuff uh -huh. as my daddy used to say i'm gonna learn you something today yeah. Right. Uh -huh. See, that, that's interesting. He's going to infect me with the virus of learning so much so that my subjectivity is removed. And now he's implanted in me his own understanding. That's mm. a beautiful definition of what education is about. Yes. And that's what I want to do. And we have to challenge that. We have to develop new neural pathways in the brain yes. to figure uh -huh. out how to do it. Now, there are new things that have developed as a result of the instantaneous way of knowing on the Internet. But I'm telling you, sometimes lay back, study, yeah. think critically, open reflect on it, open a book, yeah. read a book. book. That's yeah. why I say I write books like niggas write hooks. Ah, <laughs> uh, Michael Eric Dyson. <laughs> the book is made in America. <laughs> Michael Eric Dyson. First of many yes. lectures you will hear here on Sway in the Morning. Get that man a round of applause. I want to thank you for coming by this morning. Thank you, my brother. Thank you all for having me. This thank is you. so powerful. Oh.